Howdy doody, my name is Susie, and today I thought I would share with you how to make these semi-handmade pop-up cards. And I'm calling them semi-handmade because I'm using already existing cards that I bought with their envelopes as my starting jump off point. And in order, so in order to make these pop-up cards, I've learned two very elementary pop-up designs. And I learned these from watching Duncan Birmingham. And he really is a master at folds and creating these pop-up magnificent cards. And he really is a master at these pop-up designs. He has a tutorial on YouTube. I think there's about a hundred different videos on all the different folds so that you can create this mechanism that creates really magnificent pop-up designs for books, cards, anything. So you can take a look at his videos for really de for really detailed and expert instruction. So I'm making the two most basic elementary pop-up designs and I'm making a V fold for an upright card and the V fold goes like this. So you can adhere something to either side there or if you turn it around, the V fold is inverted, you can adhere things to there. But the point is that you've got a vertical card and when you open it flat, you've got your pop-up design. So for the V design, I used an existing card. I inserted Chester's face into the snowman and then when you open up the card, this is the V design, you get a group of little trees and then of course you write your message. And the second one I did it was for a horizontal card. And as you can see, this one is a step or a long rectangle that I've created. And this is going to enable me to adhere things to the front and the back. The second one I learned was the parallel fold, which is this one. And that enabled me to create these horizontal cards that when you open them up, you don't open them all the way flat. You open them like this and you see how you create this 3D effect where I've got the barn and the trees in the back. And then I've got Chester in the sleigh in the front. So those are the two basic principles and I'm going to show you how to do both. Now all you're going to need in order to create this is some cards and envelopes and to be honest I just went to the dollar store. I bought 12 cards with the envelopes and it even has the um, a matching label for the back. And for $1.50, I couldn't justify going out and buying the cardstock, buying the envelope separately, and then the amount of ink that it would take to create the cards. It just didn't make sense. So for $1.50, I got all my cards and I made sure to get some simple designs that are going horizontally and some simple designs that are going vertically so that I could do these two folds. Now you're also going to need some scissors and you're going to need some old cards. And these can be used as part of your cutout designs. So old cards that you may be keeping. I can keep the sentiment, but I will reuse the card so I can cut out the snowman, for instance, and I can put somebody's face in it. I can cut out the words, I can cut out the snow. Here's another one that just has happy holiday. I can cut this out and use it as part of my decoration. 
Now, Duncan suggests using some solvent glue because it doesn't warp the paper, but I bought this tacky glue at uh, the dollar store. It's a Lean's tacky glue. And not only does it quickly adhere the little pieces to the card, but it leaves it fairly smooth. But I did end up getting this little tiny brush in order to really spread the glue, but you could also use a little piece of paper or anything else. But the point is you wanna make the glue and spread it as thin as possible so that it doesn't buckle the paper when you're gluing it together. The other things you might need is a ruler, a pencil, an eraser. Those old photographs. So I've got tons of old photographs from the past, which are actually, most of them are great uh, scale to use for the cards. So pictures of friends and family, pictures of your dog, you can cut out the face and add it to different elements that are in your scene and really create something fun. I did a birthday card where I cut out the torso of a person and added a cake on one side and a drink on the other using the V fold and that turned out really cute. So, so grab those old photographs, you can cut them out and use them in your design to really personalize them, especially if you're doing a birthday card for somebody in particular. You can cut out pictures of them and add it to the scene, something that represents them. Oh, and the only other thing is maybe something to really uh, a straight edge or uh, some sort of ruler to really make those folds really nice and crisp because that's really key as well. So we're going to take one of our cards and I'm going to take this one because it's uh, pretty nondescript. I can basically create any scene that I want in here and it's got a nice sentiment in it. So because the card folds up this way, then I'm going to be making the parallel, the parallel fold, but I'm going to be making it as a step. So what you need to have, and also, so you need a little bit thicker stock, thicker than letter paper, because you want these things to have some sort of structure to hold up the designs. So I've just got a little heavier stock, I also did use some old file folders that I had. That's a good weight. And then you want to take a square, a rectangle really, your stock. And I've just cut a, a rectangle that's three inches by four and a half inches, but you can do anything you like. And you can see how it's going to be sitting like this in the center of the card. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to fold the edges over half an inch. And Duncan says to fold back and forth at least three times because your folds are your hinges. And the easier it goes back and forth, the better your card will move. So then you're going to do the same thing to the other side. So I've done a fold on the bottom and a half inch fold on the top, fold it back and forth three times. So now you've got these two folds and then you're going to take it and you're going to fold it in half. And here's where a soft edge helps to really create that fold. And you're going to fold it back and forth three times. So now we've got this. So now we've got the two little side flaps. And these little side flaps are what we're going to glue to the card. So we're going to glue one of the flaps down on the bottom of the card. And the other flap, we're going to adhere it to the side of the card so that we can create this step effect in the center. 
and we're going to put glue along these two folds and then we're going to I'm just spreading it out with a little paintbrush and Duncan says that the most important part is to get the glue right at the edge and then we're just going to line up So now we've just lined up the fold of our step with the fold of the card. We're going to fold it. Make sure that there is a nice strong bond. And then when you open it, you're going to, you're going to lift that center fold and you see you've created, you can see that you've created that step like this. And now I can adhere whatever I want in the front and I can also create my scenery in the back. So that's the parallel fold. So now we will decorate it. So I've got my card with my step and I want to add something to the back and to the front. So I've been through all my cards and I found this old card, old Charlie Brown card, which is really cute. So I've cut out Snoopy and I'm going to insert Poopy. Um, photographs actually turn out really well because of the quality of the paper, the image, and generally speaking, photographs are going to be around um, the same scale that you're using when you're making a card, whether it be a birthday card or a Christmas card. Whoops. So I trim out my image. In this case, it's Chester. And I want to insert it. So I'm going to make a slit in the hat and I'm going to be able to secure the face to the image. That way I can insert his face. So he's wearing the hat and I've got something to glue because this is just paper. I've got something to glue it to. So now I've got my image secured my card now what you don't want is your image to stick up over your card once it's closed so now that I've measured that I realize this is going to be better for my vertical card I've got three and a half in inches from the base of my step to the end of the card. So I know that I want all my images to be under three and a half inches. So what we're going to do, I'm going to save this. I'm going to look for images that are under three and a half inches. So I'm going to sacrifice one card. So you can see I've cut out a bunch of trees and I can start adding it to the back and creating my scenery images. Here's some more trees in the front and then there's uh, even more little trees in the back. And you just wanna play with it and you can see the different size trees. If you add some to the front, medium, and then these in the back, you can see how it's really creating that 3D dimension. I'm gonna add a sled. If you wanted something really custom, you could, like I said, you could draw it out on the computer. If you're doing one card for a birthday, you can certainly customize it, but if you're doing a lot of cards for Christmas, it can become a little bit cumbersome and expensive. But anyways, I drew my little sled so I've got my sled and I've got my dog cut out it's like this, but you can see that doing paper is very thin. 
and uh, a little bit flimsy. So I think it's just better to glue it to a little bit of thicker cardstock. So if I was looking for a perfect size, what I actually did in order to make it a perfect fit was I actually scanned the card into my computer that I was going to be using. And then I took my image and inserted it into the scanned card to get the right scale. And then I took my image and I printed it separately. So now you've got, so now you see that that holds much better. I've got my trees in the back. I've got my larger trees in the front. And then I've got these little tiny ones that I can put back here so that you've got more of that um, perspective. So you see? And it's good to always fold your card when gluing because that way everything seems to just fall into the right place. So now I've got the background trees done. And this is where I'm going to glue them, the larger trees, to the front of this rectangle. So I'm just going to look at it to position it. You want to make sure it doesn't stick out from the sides of the card. There you go. So you want to um, glue it, but you don't want to leave your card shut because you may end up having little bits of glue in other places. Adhere it in place, but then open it up and let it dry because you don't want it to dry closed. And there you go. You got Chester in a sleigh going through the forest. But it looks like it's missing something up here. Obviously, the more you cut out, the more interesting and the more 3D the design is going to be. So I just cut out like this and I left the guy's feet and the tree. So you can see that I pushed and you don't have to do this design, it could be anything you want, but you can see that those skaters in the background, I've just pushed them behind the trees. So I've actually, I glued the base of the tree, but I didn't glue all the way up. So there, we've got the skating rink behind the trees, and we've got Chester and his sleigh sleeping while everyone is playing. So it just creates an extra dimension. So look how cute this is. As an example, three inches by four and a half, and we're going to fold it in half. Two, three, and we're going to have to decide whether or not we want our card inverted this way. So I want to attach Chester that's on the bike, and I want to attach it on this side and be able to maintain the writing on this side. So I want it to be like this. So in order to do th the pop-up V, we have to make a fold half an inch on the bottom. So we had our V and we've just folded half an inch on the bottom like this. We'll do that three times. Then you fold it over and on the fold, this is the folded side. You're gonna take, you're gonna cut off that edge to the fold. So when you open it up, now you've got this. And these are your gluing flaps like that. If you look at it that way, the crease is in the fold of the card. So I'm holding down those two little flaps. That's good. So now I'm just going to lay this down like so, and I'm gonna fold it over. And I wanna make sure that that corner is lined up with the fold. So this is the way that I'm going to glue this flap down. So I'm just gonna fold the flap over. So I've just glued that first flap down like that. 
I'm gonna fold the card. And now I'm gonna add glue here. I'm going to add glue to this flap and then I'm gonna close the card and glue it together. I pop up like that. So now that it's in position, so I position my pop up and then I'm gonna close it just to do a trial because I wanna make sure that it's inside. So that, let me just do a dry run. Okay, so it's like that. I just wanna add enough glue to adhere to the, uh, the pop up. You don't want to overdo it. And you just fold the card right into it. So you can see that pop up. Now this is the extra little piece of card that I left on, which I could have cut off, but I'm actually gonna glue this down because I like the glitter of the snow here. Now I could cut right around that wheel, but what I'm just doing is I'm just folding this like this because I like that sparkly snow. So you can see when you open this one up, ta-da! There he is on his bike, riding with all the gifts. So that's another fun pop-up to do. So there you go, you can recycle old photographs and old Christmas cards and create these and create these very adorable pop-up scenes. So you can insert faces into existing cards. Do your V design, so you've got the pop-up of trees. You've got the same vertical, but this time we've got Chester riding a bike. And then you've got your horizontal, where you can create these little 3D sceneries. And these are kind of nice because you can let your card sit out like this. And here's another one, Chester and the barn in the background. So like, you, I'm sure anybody that receives a handmade card like this would really appreciate it. I think it's so much fun. It's a great way to reuse all those cards you've been keeping, old photographs that you barely look at anymore. You can really transform it into something that's very custom personalized and special. If you try this, I hope you like it. And if you like it, I hope you share it. And if you'd like to see more content, I hope you subscribe. Happy holiday season and happy card making. Enjoy. Enjoy.